Hello everybody and welcome to my video. Today I am going to talk about this book that I just recently finished. It was one of my kind of uh, spontaneous uh, time when I, when I chose a book because I saw that this book was just, you know, um, it was just sitting there on the shelf and I thought, well, why not? And I grabbed it and I read it and yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, interesting story, right? But yeah, anyway, it's called The Hen Who Dreamed She Could Fly. And this one is written by Sun Mi Hwang, a South Korean writer. And this edition is actually translated into the English, um, obviously, because I can't read Korean. And so it's translated by Chi Young Kim. This book also contains really beautiful, I would say, um, really nice looking trans um, illustrations by Nomoko. Uh, as you can see, the, the, fo the, 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 the drawing is really beautiful. And I think it really captures the essence of this book. And I thought that that's really sweet. It overall adds up to the experience of reading this book. So in general, this book is pretty short. It's only um, 130 pages long. And yeah, it's nice. I, I think that the story overall is very nice. Uh, it was a fun read from beginning to the end. Basically, this book is about uh, a hen, uh, a hen who whose occupation mainly was to lay eggs. Uh, she was a hen. At a, at a farm and she lives in a coop. Her job is pretty much to lay eggs for the farmer. And one day, uh, you know, she just started to get really tired of it all and the eggs that she's laying has not been really good. Uh, the final egg that she lays in the farm was actually a soft-shelled egg which was rejected by the farmer. And one day the farmer grab her because she looks kind of uh, kind of sick she's not exactly healthy anymore so the farmer decides to just discard her along with other dead chickens into a pit which she calls the hole of death and it was there at the hole of death that she uh, she was she's found by a weasel and She's able to escape the weasel with the help of a wild mallard. Soon she becomes friends with the mallard and the mallard has a mate later on and they have uh, they have an egg. And this hen, her motivation throughout this book is actually to, you know, she dreams that one day she could have an egg of her own and actually sees it hatch and uh, hatch into a, a, a chick, preferably, and, you know, to take care of the chick and being a mother herself because all her life she has been laying eggs for the farmer and got her eggs snatched away. So that's pretty much her main dream in this novel. And so one day while she's outside, uh, she actually finds an egg, but she is not exactly sure whose egg it was. But as it turns out, the egg is actually uh, belonging to the mallard friend. And, you know, the mallard friend's mate has been uh, hunted by the weasel and eaten. And so she takes care of the egg. She sits on it. And soon the egg hatches and a duckling comes out. But before that, the mallard already gets eaten. The mallard friend already gets eaten. So the hen takes care of this duckling and she soon finds it quite challenging because of the fact that other animals are looking down on her uh, since she's a hen and she's taking care of a, a baby from another species. Eventually her life becomes kind of good in a way because she has this duckling who is um, who loves her back you know this this duckling also accept these hens as his mother. They have a really loving relationship with each other. 
However, of course, their, their lives, even when the duckling has grown up, they are still haunted by the fact that uh, their lives aren't going to be peaceful because there are quite a lot of predators around, especially the weasel who she encountered while she was at the Hole of Death earlier. And I would say the ending is pretty bittersweet. I kind of enjoyed the ending, to be honest. I like the fact that, you know, throughout this story, we, has, we have been so connected to the hen character. And, oh, by the way, the, na the hen's name is Sprout. I, I'm not sure why I didn't reveal that. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the hen's name is Sprout. So we have been uh, connected to the life of Sprout ever since she was a hen at the coop laying eggs for the farmer. And we have been sympathizing with her and relating to her story and her um, the, the, the hardships that she's facing. And I guess the story was able to make us feel that we are friends with sprout the hen and i think that's where the the strength of this uh book comes out because um now when we when we read this book we are able to feel what the hen is feeling and that is kind of weird if there is no context because you know the character is a hen and I think it's really great to have non-human characters who we can kind of um, kind of understand who we can actually put ourselves into and at the same time I also like the ending especially of this book because um, it makes you feel kind of sad when you finally realize that this book ends and then you are also aware that you know, this this character is not going to be someone you will see anymore it's like a farewell to the character and again it's if, if there is no context it would be weird to say oh i feel so sad to say goodbye to a hen to a chicken but it it really is because uh it really does make sense <laughs> For me because you know the hen has shown some characteristics that makes us root for her and kind of makes you feel like you're separating from a friend you know overall I think that this book is really lovely if you have not read this I would love to recommend it to you I think that the characters are really well developed there are also various characters who are really colorful in terms of their personalities. Even though they are animal characters, but you can obviously see that they have personalities of their own. You can see that, you know, the chicken characters are like that. And, you know, the duck characters are like this and that, you know. Also, the stake raised in this novel is also, it, it feels quite real. And so it doesn't make this feel, doesn't make this novel feel like some sort of a fluff piece, and it makes you feel that you know there there is a sense of urgency in the plot of this novel, which I greatly appreciate. So um, that's it for the hen who dreams she could fly by Sun Mi Huang, and I'll see you again in another video next time. And until then, bye bye. And take care.